Let's bring in Alan Gould, Loop Capital Analyst. Alan has a buy, uh, raises his target to 585. It's great to have you, Alan. Welcome. Good morning, Carl. Um, a lot of targets with six. I think Pivotal's at 700. Uh, is, how, to what degree is valuation a concern, if any, right now? Listen, the stock, the stock has got a high multiple now, but I think it deserves it. The fundamentals are changing, and I think the upside, the bias on the earnings estimates will be to the upside. You know, the competitive environment has changed. Uh, the streaming wars are over. Netflix has won. You know, when you're in a war, you don't sell ammo to the competition. It's all, and everyone's selling licensing content. That's the ammo of the streaming business. Um, it's hard to be both an arms dealer and a competitor. Um, if you look, this is almost the mirror image of what we had in 2022. In 2022, Netflix subgrowth was restrained because of password sharing. Uh, all the traditional studios were just really launching and marketing their their uh, new streaming services. They were reduced. They cut prices. They were spending a ton on content, and they stopped licensing to Netflix. The opposite has all occurred. With this kind of subgrowth and the possibility of further price hikes, is content budget is is that worth? worrying about anymore? Not at all. I mean, <laughs> the company generated almost $7 billion of free cash flow. The strike might have added a billion, so call it $6 billion. They bought back $6 billion of stock. They'll generate another $6 billion probably this year, probably buy back another $6 billion of stock. They've got the best balance sheet in the industry. Debt is one time, they're one time's levered. It's going to go down. I mean, everything seems to be moving quite well for them. Yeah, about two and a half billion dollars worth of stock back in the in the last in this last quarter. reported quarter. Let's talk a bit about the ad business. I'm curious to get your take on it. Uh, it was up 70 percent quarter to quarter. That is sub growth in terms of ad supported. I think there are 23 million now. Still a small percentage of their overall. Do you think it's a real business for them? It's absolutely a real business for them. I mean, if there was one disappointment over the last year, maybe that the ad growth didn't, uh, they didn't scale as much as they had anticipated. And it's 23 million um, monthly average users. If you figure two to three users per account, it's probably like 10 or 11 million subs that are now on the ad tier. And that's a global number, not U.S. I mean, Netflix, I believe when they launched this a year ago, they said to advertisers, we should be at about 40 million MAUs by the end of the year. They're at 23 million. It's taken a little bit longer. It's not a concern at all. I mean, what we clearly see is that eyeballs and viewing is moving from linear to streaming. Advertising will as well. You know, CTV is going to continue to grow. Netflix has the viewers. They're going to have the eyeballs. To the extent they've won the war then, Alan, what does it mean for those who were participating in it previously? It's going to get a lot tougher. I mean. One would think that, you know, the speculation on Paramount that Skydance is going to buy them or someone else is going to buy them, or even if they stay independent, they may have to close the streaming business and go back to becoming a content seller. They can't afford those losses. You know, Comcast, your parent company, is losing over $2 billion a year at Peacock. Brian is not going to stand for that for very long. Does it make sense that maybe a Peacock and and a max merge, there will be fewer streamers. I mean, Netflix even said there'll be consolidation. We'll see it. Fewer streamers, less competition for advertising, less competition for, for content, and a little bit easier to raise price.